All right, thank you. Hello, everyone. This is the weekly TSC call. I think I'm only see familiar names, so you're all aware of the antitrust policy. We also have the code of conduct. You all know all those things and love them and defend them, right? Help hold them, all the good stuff, so we can stay out of trouble. Thank you. All right, let's get going. So a few announcements. First, a reminder, once more, there is the uh, Hyperledger developer newsletter going out each Friday. It's an opportunity for everyone to highlight what's going on in their project, working group, SIGs or whatever. You want to say something about this, right? Uh, nothing beyond we are, we would love to have more participation. I see that Helen has unmuted. Helen? <laughs> I was just going to say that, um, yeah, it, it gets a pretty decent open rate. Um, so folks that might think, oh, you know, it's, you know, what's what, I don't know, might not see the value in it. It's actually gets quite a lot of eyeballs. So if you're looking for, to expand your, um, your project, looking to, um, you know, get the word out on something you might need, participation, what have you, um, go ahead and drop your notes in that wiki page um, for the developer newsletter and I'll incorporate them in contact if you have any questions. But um, again, it's, it's actually a pretty decent tool to get, um, get the word out and again, you know, breaking down silos and barriers between projects. It's, um, it's, it's fairly effective in, in getting some eyeballs on it. So um, absolutely, I would absolutely love more um, contributions and announcements. I go out searching and use kind of my news judgment on what I think is kind of, um, you know, the, the things that are percolating to the top each week, but would absolutely love some guidance from the different projects um, to include the announcements, um, the worthwhile announcements for that uh, publication. And I have to say, I feel for you because I've been in charge of <laughs> editing a newsletter like this, and it's pretty gruesome. The, <laughs> the clock keeps ticking no matter what, and you're struggling getting content and all. So I, uh, I can totally relate to the pain. And, and one more thing, though, is, you know, again, on the call about the SIG uh, feedback and that Tracy uh, shared when I wasn't there, you know, there was quite a bit of talk about how the newsletter could be used as a vehicle to fill in the gaps and, you know, uh, try to bridge the different parts of the community. I mean, all of, sound, all of that sounded really good, but if we don't actually act on it, it doesn't work, right? So we're, we seem to have put a lot of hope in being able to use the newsletter to, you know, solve some of the issues we are facing, but, uh, we have to actually make use of it. Otherwise, you know, it's all words and nothing really improves. So with that said, we have a reminder also for call for maintainers, right? Sure, uh, that, that call will follow this call and I plan on giving a, a fairly high level overview on where Insights is and how Insights can help maintainers, uh, you know, better understand their project. Um, so, so please. Yeah, I'll be there. And finally, the global forum, who wants to talk about this? I think that's gonna be Daniela or David. Yeah, I didn't cover this last week. Just a reminder, you should have gotten an email from Karen um, about uh, looking for volunteers for doing the project uh, overviews and asking any things. If you didn't and you would like to do one, please do reach out to anybody on staff and we'll work with you on that. Uh, once again, it's a reminder, it's 15 minutes. Uh, the goal is a five minute overview of your project with a 10 minute Q&A. And we'll direct that to those. Two? I don't think I got it, so I'm a bit curious. Uh, I'm not sure who got who was sent to fabric. Is Karen on? Oh, we'll take that offline. It was Dave and your. Yeah. yeah, this is Dave. I got it. So, uh, just one question there: Is it an overview, for, like for beginners, or is it like an update since the last year or so? An update would be great. Okay. Right. I think that's, you know, Dave, Dave, that's mostly, you know, the people that will come to those kind of sessions or people that would be looking for updates, new information and ability to talk to you all. All 
All right. Any other announcements anybody wants to make? If not, then we can move on and uh, go on to the quarterly reports. So we did get a report from the Quilt Project. And um, so it was uh, kind of long overdue. And uh, it raises some important questions. I mean, uh, basically, we only have one person working on it. And uh, he's saying, don't expect any you know, activities for the foreseeable future. And it does raise a question as to what we should do about this. So I actually put that on the agenda you may have seen further down as a discussion point. Is there anything else beyond that anybody wants to bring up that, uh, on this? No? Okay, I take that as a no. So that's cool. Let's uh, leave it at this for now then and move on. We also had a report from the fabric project that was actually um, made available last week already. I didn't see any uh, comments that uh, required discussion. There was a question Dave asked about the state of the repo linter implementation. It's still in the works. We still don't have a final answer as to you know, what should really be done. Um, what it comes down to on that front is, you know, some of us have been working on a common repository, a repo linter configuration file, and uh, people are expected to make, um, you know, to experiment with it and uh, and suggest changes. I just merged one from Troy, as a matter of fact. So there's still work underway. And by the way, there is another PR from me on that. I would appreciate if somebody could review it. Anyway, on the fabric front, is there any questions? Don't see anybody raising their hand, so I'll take that as a no. And we can therefore move ahead. We also just received, I think it was yesterday, um, report for, from Sawtooth. It didn't raise any questions to me. I didn't see uh, any comments earlier when I looked. So I don't know if there's any, anybody. Seems like this project is cruising and there's no issue. And it's all right. Okay, I still see nobody raising their hand. So I'll take that as a yes. I mean, I realize some people may not have had a chance to look at it carefully, and uh, I will put it back on the agenda next week. So you'll still have a chance to raise issues if you have any or ask questions. In the meantime, uh, put it on the wiki page is the most effective way. We're still missing a report from the Explorer team. I'm starting to wonder what's going on there. But so if there's anybody in contact with the Explorer team, close to them, they can talk to them. That would be interesting to ping them and say, hey, what are you guys up to? Your uh, report is uh, long overdue. So let's uh, get back to the, let's get, oh, Tracy, please. Yeah, I just wanted to mention on the Explorer front, I did see come through the GitHub a release, I think it was yesterday, sometime this week. Uh, version 1.1.5, which was some sort of bug fix for Explorer. So um, I think there's still things going on there. I just think we need to figure out who the right people are to contact for getting a report. Yeah, it concerns me that, you know, despite all the 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 reminder I sent on the TSC list, there is no reaction, which tells me there's nobody from the Explorer team paying attention to the TSC list. As a, as a project, I would expect people to be at least connected with the TSC enough to be aware of those things. And, you know, but uh, yeah. Thanks for the 
a piece of info, Tracy. All right, so again, let's go, let's move on, get to the discussion. As I started, stated earlier, there's a question about the quilt project. So basically we're in the situation where the project itself, I mean, there's, you know, this project has always been, how do I say that, minimal in the sense that there is one person working on it and it went through different phases. There were times when it seemed to be going dead completely. And then, uh, you know, we had one person step up and say, no, I'm actually interested. I'm going to work on this. So it was like, okay, this is good. Never managed to attract anybody else. So we still only have basically one maintainer, David Fueling. And then, so, he himself says, I don't know what should be done about the, the, uh, the status of this project. So I honestly don't know either. <laughs> I mean, I know that, uh, you know, I chat with Rai and he was saying, should this be moved to a lab? And the thing is, in the past, we have actually talked about, you know, uh, the possibility of rescinding project from one state to another. And we said, no, we would never do that. Project can stay indefinitely in incubation. That's okay. Um, so, I mean, you know, just saying, we, we can't just say, yeah, let's put, let's move that to a lab because it would be at odd with what we've decided before. It doesn't mean we can't do it. It just means it requires a little bit more form <laughs> if we want to do that, because we would have to agree that, you know, this is at odd with what we've said before and maybe change a policy as to how we can dispose of projects when they are in limbo. But uh, so the alternative is, you know, we could move that to like towards archiving it but you know, he seemed to want to work on it again eventually. So is there much to gain in putting an, you know, archiving it now? And then he will come back and say, can I resurrect this project? I mean, of course, then we could say, yeah, go make it the lab if you want. And it would be a way around her policy. I don't know that there's much to gain there. So I don't know. I, I can, I'm happy to hear what others think. So I see Dano is first on the queue. So if we're looking at what other um, open source umbrella organizations do, um, we could use that as kind of a guide for what happens in situations. <clears throat> Apache has something called an attic, um, where when the PMC can't muster up enough votes for releases or other such issues, they move it there and it's something between deprecated and end of life. Um, there's still a PMC that overlooks, overlooks it, it still kind of grows, it can still do releases. But one of the unique things about the attic is if you get enough people who want to be responsible and lead it, it can come back out of the active and go back to the beginning of the Apache life cycle. So one of the things that's missing from our life cycle, I think, is it's all straightforward. It's incubation, active, deprecation, end of life. Um, so I was wondering if, you know, to solve this, you know, we'd be a little less antsy about moving things to deprecated and end of life if there was a way for them to move back to the incubation state when they get sufficient um, activity to warrant it. So it's not a death sentence when they get moved to a further, you know, down the road, it's not the total end of the line of the project. There is a path back to activity if they want for it. So that's one thing that I think we should probably think about as one of the options rather than just moving stuff back to um, the labs is to give the a option for projects to be resurrected, possibly in the labs, but I think a more appropriate place might be for back to incubation, that that's the standard it needs to be incubation worthy before it gets moved out of its quiescent state. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like shelving it for the time being. Uh, we, we don't have a, a shelf to put things in. I, uh, yeah. Nathan is next. Part of what I wondered as I read through the proposal is uh, we don't know a lot about the overall health of the interledger protocol itself. And well, you know, what's the trend of the underlying community beyond Hyperledger related to this project? And that, that could tell us a little bit more about what we should do with it. But it does seem like we might need a state. I don't know if I like calling it the attic, but like a maintenance state that says, you can use this project, 
Um, but it's probably not going to get bigger. It's probably not going to have lots of development effort beyond bug fixing. Um, kind of like a, it's in maintenance mode, so to speak, um, that would hopefully indicate that, you know, it, it's, it's not going away, it's not dead, um, but, you know, help set the expectations and maybe we could put it on a different reporting schedule and a few things to, to make it easier for someone to get involved without having as much overhead. Um, and hopefully serve as an invitation to say, if you want to bring this back into a more active state, these are the things that need to happen. But I, you know, I agree with Dan that we don't really have that kind of state right now. No, that's right. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, I'll just mention I dropped in chat that um, uh, the Apache attic is intended to be the end of life situation. And I think, um, I think what we should just distinguish between, or maybe think of a way to describe is the difference between projects that are simply out of gas, you know, where there isn't enough uh, uh, contributor energy to really muster a release that is trustworthy, you know, um, uh, and that's where something like Quilt could go um, versus something where um, the contributors actively recommend that you move on from the tool, which I think was the case with Composer, where, you know, there's the original um, maintainer saying, you know, really, we're going to get back to more of an SDK or a point of view. There's no one around to update Composer. Um, and Composer's kind of reached its, uh, you know, a point where anyone using it should be using something else. And it feels like these are two different end of lives. <laughs> um, those could be, you know, are two different statuses. Those, those could both be in an end of life status uh, with just different guidance given to people. Um, uh, and one can still go find the Composer code. Um, but, and in both cases, you, you might want to warn people away. But in both cases, you want to keep wiki pages around and documentation around on the process and the premise that it's useful as mulch to the next thing that comes along at the worst case. So I kind of feel like what the quilt is asking for is moving down the deprecated to end of life uh, kind of thing. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah. All right, thank you, Brian. Nathan, are you back on or just left over? Okay. Anybody else? Come on, Arun, I see you've been uh, typing in the chat window. Why don't you speak up? So I, I think Brian summarized it pretty well. So um, in, in this case, it's not that maintainer is saying we should end this project, rather that even though that we, we still have activity, even though it's just one maintainer or one active contributor over there, so we should not punish the project for for just for the reason that he's not he or she is not getting additional contributions. Um, I think Brian summarized it it's well. Um, sorry. So it occurs to me that I mean there there is one option that's obvious, uh, which is to just do nothing, right? We can leave it like this, and we can advise them maybe to put a comment on their homepage saying, you know, there's no current active development. Uh, we don't have planned new features and, but you know, we'll be there if you need to, if there are bugs, we'll try to address them and leave it at that. This is totally acceptable to me. Of course, you know, the no notion of incubation is a bit at odd with that, but phenomenally, there is no cost to doing this and they could pick it up or pick up the pace anytime and it would be fine. Tracy. Yeah, I, I agree, Arno. I think if you read through our life cycle, that's where it needs to stay is right in incubation. Um, our life cycle says that the next state would be active or deprecated. And uh, deprecated says that the maintainers have to say that they want to deprecate it. Right, um, and then the TSC has to agree to it. So I don't think the maintainers have said that. They basically have said they just wanna uh, put it to sleep for a while, right? Until uh, there's more interest in, and more focus on it. Uh, so based on our life cycle, the right answer is we don't do anything. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't change our life cycle, but uh, based on where we're currently at, we do nothing. Yeah, but would you, I mean, what, what do you think about the proposal we heard, like maybe to insert a new state 
like attic shelf or whatever we call it. Yeah, I think the the difficult part there is what what is the name of that state? We seem to have difficulty with that. Um, and is there a different state for projects that are moving from incubation to that state versus projects that are moving from active to that state? Um, you know, are there two different states that we have to introduce? I think there's a whole lot of questions and, and uh, discussion that we have to have if we introduce new state or states. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Arun. So, um, it also raises an interesting question in, in the sense that what if a project, so now I, I'm not sure when was this project moved and if we had that um, fine line criteria for project to be moved into incubation when, when Quilt was proposed. But now that we have a definite process that project will start in and then incubate only when it meets certain criteria. So um, the other question which it raises is, have we defined a process where for a project which is in incubation? I, I believe this similar question came up earlier for relating to another project. I would not bring up the name here, but when it does not meet its charter goals or um, like the agreed upon maintainers, they move away from the project. What did, what, um, I mean, how do we handle such scenario, right? I know similar question was brought up earlier relating to another project. Should we consider um, that scenario for Quilt as well? My hand is up, Arno. Yeah, please go ahead. I don't see. Okay, well, I, I don't have the ability as the host. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, 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 I, I get it. Sorry. So I, uh, I, I, I wanna like, I'm really pushing back on your assertion that there's no cost of carrying it. Um, there's a huge cost and that's, you know, just look at the greenhouse, right? Um, it's very confusing. And if we have a project that we know is not gonna do anything for the next couple of quarters, um, it puts a burden, it puts an additional burden on staff to try to explain, well, yeah, that's that shows up on the greenhouse, but it's kind of asleep and and don't expect a lot out of it. But maybe in a couple, like I I beg the TOC to find a way to to you know help projects transition more to hibernation or something. Uh, I, I don't know what the word is, but it's not zero cost. All right, I take your point. I want to uh, to to point out there is a work underway to revamp the greenhouse, right? And uh, I can tell you, I mean, Ellen might say more, but uh, you know, the discussion has so far has been going towards a much more dynamic view of the, how we present projects that would show, you know, things in a different way so that we can surface things differently and that would give us more flexibility and maybe, you know, I think address these kind of issues you're raising. But uh, beyond the greenhouse, I mean, in terms of resources, do we have other costs with adding a basically dormant project? I would say uh, technically no, a dead mailing list doesn't cost anything. Um, I, I, I would defer to Brian um, if there's a reputational hit from having them i don't know brian thoughts uh, i mean it's not a problem until it's a problem and, and there hasn't been a problem with somebody saying you know quilt is broken there's uh you know no one has come up with say security holes uh because i think there's there's a um you know perhaps a burden on a uh, on security at hyperlitra or collectively if somebody reports a major bug in in a, a project that there isn't somebody around to respond quickly to address that and, and respond. That's that's where I'd more, worry more about the reputational risk. But I do agree that projects that are not active should not be as widely promoted and equally promoted as the ones that are. And I, that, that does open the broader question of rebooting or reformatting the um, the greenhouse into something more dynamic and, and landscape driven, which is a longer term conversation. But in the shorter term, I kind of see in the status update, you know, justification to say quilt might not be dead, but it might not um, deserve to be in the greenhouse right now. 
All right, so let's close on this. I think, you know, the status quo is, for now it stays in incubation. We agree there is no, you know, obvious uh, step we can take to move it to somewhere else right now. Uh, the alternative is somebody makes the effort to come up with a proposal on how we modify the project life cycle. So, or maybe if you can come up with a new idea, it's fine with me. Maybe there's a tag of some kind that we can say this is hibernated. <laughs> but um, short of such a proposal that would have to be looked into, developed, proposed, approved, so that we can then use it. I guess for now we are stuck in this current situation we're in, which clearly Rai doesn't like, but that's how it is. I suppose, Rai, you could make a proposal if you if you want. Uh, I, I don't know about that. Uh. <laughs> that's okay. I mean, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot. It's just like, you know, that's where we are. Any other thoughts? Otherwise, I'd like to move with the other agenda item. So I don't see any hand up. So let's move on. Promoted release. So in the process of uh, implementing the resolution with regard to the change of name from active status to uh, graduated, so it, you know, I realized that the document we had, the, the page that described the project life cycle made references to promoted release. And you may remember that at some point, well, at least the older people like myself <laughs> should remember that promoted release used to be called first major release. And so there was this idea that, well, when you make a first major release, you know, Hyperledger goes uh, all, uh, all in and then gets the you know press releases and a whole bunch of you know communication effort is put into it and so this is a big event and there was also security audit and a bunch of things happening and so we said well maybe not all projects in all states can claim to have the right to do this and long story short we said well that's not really a state it's just one thing it's promoted release because in fact some sometimes we do that and it's not the first major release so we move to from first major release to promoted release and it's pretty clear to me that you know we ended up with the documentation where the name was changed and things were kind of left broken and so in the project life cycle page it referred to promoted releases and it kind of, it didn't define, it said to have a promoted release, the project must be in active status, it was called. And, um, and so, you know, when we, when actually Tracy, I have to give her credit, when she reviewed the change I had made regarding the change of name of active from active to graduated, she noticed that there was all this text about promoted release that didn't seem to make much sense even refer to SEM there and a bunch of things that seem to be completely out of date. So in the end, I decided to just get rid of the section on promoted releases, which didn't quite belong to the project lifecycle anyway. But the only page we have left is this one that uh, Rai is uh, you know, showing, which is the criteria for promoted release. And there is no definition of, well, this tells you what you need to have to have a promoted release, but it doesn't even say what a promoted release actually is. And so I feel like we have a bit of a problem here in our documentation. There's a gap here. So I figured, well, I'm going to bring it up. And I know that Arun for one was saying, well, this should be defined somewhere, which makes sense. So I said, okay, let's let's take that on in the separately. So we have implemented the change from active to graduated, and, but now we have this problem of promoted releases. And so I felt like, okay, I'll bring it up to the team and see what people, are say, people think we should do. And there's also the question about, you know, is that still accurate? Do we actually go through this? Because for one thing it says, 
prior to bringing a project to the TSC for a vote on granting a promoted releases. And I don't even know this is happening. Art. Hey, so if I recall correctly, we used to have sort of a, a strong requirement for a promoted release and, and what that meant, but this sort of died uh, because the marketing people just sort of decided what releases to promote and how to promote them uh, without any input from the TSC really. Um, so this came to be like a marketing thing rather than a TSC thing. Uh, releases were being promoted without, you know, any sort of TSC thing. So, so the whole thing just kind of died. Um, I, I think that's, that's sort of what happened. Um, so I don't know, given, you know, all the changes we've made, if we even want to be in the business as a technical steering committee of handling promotion. Yes, I think that's a very well put. It's kind of what, you know, I had in mind and made me feel like we need to bring this up to the TSC and have a discussion on this. Tracy. Yeah, I would say that we probably haven't had a project come to us for a promoted release because there hasn't been any. Um, I mean, if you think about We've had promoted releases for Fabric when it hit 1.0. We had a promoted release for Sawtooth when it hit 1.0. I don't think we've had any other promoted releases, like official promoted releases. Obviously, marketing has been doing a ton of marketing for any of the projects, um, you know, as they've moved through in the life cycle. I think the other piece about promoted releases per se that we had kind of tied into it, but it wasn't really necessarily related to marketing was things like the, um, we were doing license scans every month, but then once it was going to go kind of active 1.0, we ensured that there was no um, license concerns and we went through the legal committee to, to ensure that there were no issues there. And then there was also the uh, security scans that we did um, that Hyperledger paid for um, to ensure that there were no security vulnerabilities for a 1.0 type release. Um, so I, I think there were some other pieces that were kind of tied to promotion. And when we went to this promoted release, we kind of dropped the requirement for those sorts of things uh, happening as far as license not drop them completely, but we just didn't include them in uh, the definition of what a promoted release was anymore. Um, and it truly did become marketing focused. So I think in general, as long as all of those things are happening, right, the, <laughs> the security scans when we do kind of a major release, um, the license scanning is still going on and that the legal committee is being, um, yeah, is being talked to you, discussed with when there's things that need exceptions, uh, things like that, I think are still important and need to happen, but they don't necessarily need to be tied to what this thing is, uh, whatever we call it. And uh, I, I mean, marketing is doing their best to get the word out about all of the different projects, regardless of what state they're in. So um, I agree with Hart that like this, piece around marketing isn't required, but those other pieces are still required. They don't require TSC approval, but they are required processes that have to happen, and I'm sure they're still happening. I think yeah, the, cool. the license scanning happens once a quarter. Um, I'd have to check in with Steve Winslow. Um, we are doing uh, security audits in kind of an ad hoc way, uh, deciding which which uh, projects get them in what order. Uh, you know, there's some turbulence there because the, of the change in staff. Um, Brian, do you have anything you want to add about the difference between where we were and where we are? No.
<laughs> I was brief. <laughs> Unusually brief coming from Brian. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't sure there's was anything. To add. I wasn't sure why I was being prompted. <laughs> no, uh, I, well, just we're uh, we're going through right now, uh, figuring out the the security audit schedule. So that's that's why I brought it up. Um, Okay, yeah, no, I mean, we have capacity to continue to do security scans of uh, projects that, that reach a useful milestone. Uh, I think there's some demand for us to do that for Aries and Ursa next. Um, so there's some interest there, but uh, I, I, we, we have a capacity for other projects that are, you know, getting ready for their first promoted release to, to, to do that. Um, I don't think the timing of that is awkward to try to do that before a 1.0 or before a first promoted release. So I, I wouldn't make it a requirement of release, but. But so do, does it still make sense for the TSC to have a say in what can be a promoted release? I would say that um, for documentation, uh, like the stuff about doing the license scans and all of that needs to live somewhere. But I, I think to Hart's earlier point, um, this is completely decoupled from any technical stuff. So I, I would just say, you know, remove this whole thing from the purview of the TSC and just document how, how it is done. Yes. Or should be done. Set guidance, give, give a, here's what good looks like kinds of things and, and um, trust the, the maintainers to follow that and, and <clears throat> ask for that in a status report, perhaps, and talk about that, but um, uh, not, have, not put the TSC in the position of having to approve the first release. Okay, so that's, that's uh, I think that's an important uh, finding that I agree. I think we, it would be good to make that decision official and uh, update the documentation accordingly. I agree with you know not throwing out all these texts because I think there is some good stuff in there. It's just the fact that it seems to be under the purview of the TSC. I, when I looked into it, I was like, really? I, I don't even know that we are actually, you know, that's not how we are operating today. So for me, when the documentation is at odds with how we do things, it's, I think it's time to update the documentation. I'm willing to do the PR if you're willing to get a second and do the vote. Well, I think we could have the vote now on, you know, agreeing that the, we are basically agreeing that the promoted release is no longer the, the, um, the governance of the TSC. Right, that's what I was saying. Um, Heart. I was just going to say, just to be clear, what we're voting on is that we say that we're just sort of canceling the TSC procedure for a promoted release. That's what I was proposing. Yes, just remove all this verbiage and save it somewhere else for releases as attached to the TSC. Sure, yeah, I'll second that proposal. And do we do we still have the requirement about graduated? Do we, I mean, who is in charge to enforce it? Or we just say, well, that's not our problem. Well, it hasn't been enforced. Marketing has been more than happy to promote non-graduated projects. Okay. All right, so I'm happy with the proposal. Anybody wants to say on it? I think I already did. Oh, you you seconded. Okay. I second right, Alexandra. All right, we have more seconds than we need now, third and fourth. So uh, let's try and get through this quickly. Uh, is there any questions about the vote? Or the proposal? <clears throat> Does anybody want to object? Does anybody want to have um, 
Does anybody want to abstain? I actually have an objection to this process where we don't require people to make an affirmative action to vote on it. It just feels weird. I would prefer that we at least have a voice vote of everyone saying I or nay. You do? Okay. Yes. You have problems with this in Ethereum where passive action causes stuff to change and people say, well, I never voted on it. So that's my concern with it. All right. Uh, that's fine. I mean, I appreciate that. For me, it seemed to be more effective, but... All right. We so, can do group I's and nays. I don't think we need to do a roll call unless someone calls for it, but I don't like the silence confers um, success approach. Okay. Uh, I, that's fine. I can, I can totally accommodate your request. So anybody in favor says aye. 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 All right. Aye. I don't have to redo the abstain and then the objections, right? All right. So this is passing uh, unanimously. Thank you. Sure, thanks. All right. So finally, um, I wanted us to have a look at the backlog of the decision log and see if we could do a little bit of cleanup. It's pretty clear if you look at it that there are issues that are still pending and that you can hope to get um, resolution on. And then there are things that just like, I, you know, they either are superseded by other issues that we are working on, or uh, we just never get to a closure. So we might as well accept it. So, the first one, the DCO validation, I think this one is still pending. So we'll definitely keep that one. The project maturity matrix and badging is also pending experimentation and the automatic tools. So we'll definitely keep that one. The restructuring the greenhouse to avoid confusion. I would say we can close it because we now have a task force that's dealing with this. And all that we this was about is, you know, let's make sure this happens. And I'm happy to say it is happening under the leadership of Helen, who is present here and can tell you more if you care. But so I would propose to close it and call it, uh, how do we call that? Like we, we have uh, uh, delegated this to the task force led by Helen. Does that sound reasonable? Grace. Just a quick question. Is it, um, I'm fine to update the status, but would the status be in process or I don't want to close it because I think we want to re regroup on, um, you know, if it actually happens, but I'm just not sure. But obviously proposed doesn't necessarily make sense at this point. Well, so I, I see what you're saying. Um, I mean, I, I, those might be the only two tags. Is that, I'm not sure. It doesn't cost me anything to make that text say whatever you oh, guys say want. Whatever. Yeah, we can, yeah, it's free form. You can actually say whatever you want. You want like in process? Color. Yeah, yeah. If everyone else agrees with that, but just so we don't, we do check up on it because I think it's important and we don't want it to just be closed because it's technically not closed, but it's definitely not proposed. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and it's kind of deferred to the separate effort. So, but okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Everybody cool with that? All right, let's keep going down the list. Introduce a mechanism for regular review for project. So I would contend that the badging proposal is basically addressing this need, but because the badging proposal both has the the, the badges and the project the 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 process and updating the badges. I don't know that anybody has come up with a better proposal or is intending to make one. So 
to me, it's either somebody says, no, no, we need a different mechanism to do that. And they need to work on a proposal or they are satisfied with saying, no, I can't, I'm happy to defer that to the badging mechanism. Of course, you could say, well, if the badging proposal doesn't get closed uh, or approved eventually after experimentation and whatnot, then maybe we should resurrect that then. But I don't know. Tracy? We already have a mechanism for regularly reviewing projects. They're called project reports. Um, yes. I. Uh, Arno, I see that you created this. I suggest that you withdraw it. Oh, that's easy. I can do that. <laughs> Did I? Oh, it no, says no. you created it. I think, I, yeah, okay, I'll take the blame. <laughs> <laughs> the proof is right there, so I can't deny it, I suppose. <laughs> um, I do think, yeah. So I, again, I, I think, yes, withdrawing seems like a right thing to do. Hey, does anybody get offended with this? Arun? We can actually all take a vote saying that this can be considered as part of project budget criteria and then mark it as done. The resolution is that we are considering this as, I mean, we have a update quarterly report and then badging criteria keeps the project reports up to date about active status. And we can close it. Okay, so that's a different proposal. Is you want the market resolved? Yeah, because we all agree it's it's either related to one. Um, I mean, it's related to two activities, so we can resolve it. So if we want to do that, we need a we need a decision by the, everybody, the TSC. Um, want to have another vote? Want to that? I mean, I think withdrawing it is probably the easiest, but sure, have another vote. Sounds like everyone you prefer that. Um, does somebody else feel that same way, or otherwise, I'm fine with withdrawing? I would vote, vote to withdraw. <laughs> okay, nice. Tracy. And that was going to be my two minutes as well. Okay, so there's a seems like anybody else wants to make, go through the process of resolving this rather than withdrawing it. Okay, let's withdraw it then. I'm good. Thank you. Well, what's next? long-term yes. agenda framing why the order change no there is what if a top level project does not meet its charter goal i know i created that one too and uh but to my defense i think it was based on some of the question that was raised earlier on i think maybe by in some discussion we had i think i would maybe have had raised this Oh no, it was part of the rollover stuff. That's what it's about. Yeah, when we talked about rolling over, you know, that was the, that's, that's right, now I'm remembering. So you remember when we talked about rolling over projects as sub projects to an existing top level project when there was a clear dependency because a project had started with the grand uh, goal of supporting different frameworks but ended up never doing it. The idea was, well, let's simplify the number of projects, top-level projects we deal with, recognize the dependency, moving a project uh, within another one they depend on. And then there was pushback. We decided, okay, let's not do that. But then there was the question came up as part of this was, well, so it finally raises the one question, which is, what if a project does not fulfill its charter? And we don't have a mechanism per se to, to catch that. And this is what this was about. 
do we care? And if we do, how do we go at capture, you know, uh, catching that situation? Of course, it would also require knowing what to do if we decide, okay, they have not fulfilled their charter, but. So do people feel like this is still worth keeping on our decision log and something we should eventually work on? Uh, do we just give up on it? That's basically the question I'm asking. Daniel. I don't know that we need a formal process on this. I think it'll happen frequently enough that um, special action in the cases that it happens, I think would be warranted. So I would be okay with withdrawing it because formalizing it I don't see the value added. All right, thank you. So we have a proposal to withdraw it. Anybody else? Either in favor or against withdrawing? Arun. I'm against withdrawing it because the whole point such a topic was brought up last time was because a few of the members felt that a particular project is being suppressed. And I mean, that kind of thought should not have come up. And if we leave it for case by case basis, then I'm sure such kind of thoughts will again come up. All right. Fair enough. Okay, so we'll leave it for now. You know, that's fine. Let's keep going. We only have a few minutes left. If we could keep going down the list, I think and knock off a few more, I think that'd be great. So the next one is long-term agenda framing. So this was kind of like this, you know, big idea of like, okay, what is the big agenda for Hyperledger? And can the TSC set a technical direction, a roadmap for Hyperledger? We, it, it did, you know, it did lead to quite a bit of interesting discussion. I don't think you know we got anywhere specific, and I don't know how we would, you know, close this per se. But so I, I don't know what to do with this. I uh, I I thought you know, and Dan had uh, opened it when he was uh, vice chair last year, and uh, also felt like had of respect. I didn't want to just close it, but. I, it seems like a mission impossible to close it properly with the resolution. So, hot. Yeah, this seems more like uh, an abstract sort of long-term goal rather than a concrete proposal. As you correctly point out, I don't know that you know we could ever um, we could ever do anything that sort of satisfied this goal. This is sort of like an ongoing thing. Um, that being said, I think it's absolutely something we should do. So um, I'm not I'm not sure exactly where it fits. I guess. Yeah, I I agree with that. So maybe there's a maybe there's something that can be done that's different than keeping it there as an open issue. Uh, Maybe that should be something on the uh, on the wiki somewhere as a page, something to have and work on, but not technically as an issue. I don't know. Any other ideas? I mean, it's, it's, you know, it occurs to me that this thing has been sitting there for a long time and nothing is happening. And I don't know that there is anything we're going to do to that would change that. So I don't like just keeping it there for the sake of it. If we want to make sure we don't lose it, some that's maybe the best to do though, if, you know, um, until somebody can come up with a proposal on how to dispose of it. Arun. 
So it looks like this proposal is asking us to get back those discussions back into TSA meetings and uh... So did we lose Arun or is it me? Yeah, I Hello? think we lost him. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Hey, sorry, I don't know. It says my internet was unstable. Sorry about that. Yeah. So I was saying, uh, one place we are saying we don't require any reports from working groups, and we say it. Um, I mean, TSC doesn't expect anything from the working groups, and at the same time, we are saying um, architecture-related dis discussion. I mean, discussions or decisions do happen in um, architecture working group calls, and then similarly, there is another working group for identity. So should we just bring back? reporting to those working groups or maybe ask them to get a status once a month or probably once in two months uh, to the TSC. Would that be a good start to answer these questions? Okay, that, that's an interesting question, but I think it's it's orthogonal to this long-term agenda framing issue. Nathan, we're out of time, so we're gonna close after that. Okay, I guess I, I'm in favor of withdrawing or closing this proposal just because I don't see how it's not already part of our remit. I mean, we get to set our own agenda and if this is the thing that's going to help us set technical direction for the project or help better support the underlying um, coding projects better, then this is all what we ought to be doing. I, yeah. If any of these items on the list came up in our agenda, uh, I would not be surprised at all and I would find them all probably fairly engaging. Um, I don't think there's anyone in the architecture or identity working groups that Arun was talking about that would be offended if we wanted to take up any of these topics in a TSC meeting. I think they would actually be excited we were paying attention. All right, thank you. I, as you say that, it occurred to me, maybe one uh, kind of uh, middle ground is to, to try and, you know, capture some of the content there. I mean, there's questions that were raised. I agree with you, it's kind of a mission to do. And maybe we just put some of this text on the main page of the TSC, the main wiki page, as things that the TSC, you know, takes into account or as part of its mission. And then we can close this and say, okay, we, we, we are not going to lose it. It's there. We have, you know, restated that. I think that could be a, a reasonable way out. So we don't lose it completely and we can dispose of it. All right, let's leave it at this. We're out of time. Thank you. I think we made some progress. We'll keep doing this because there are a few more I think we should get through in a similar way to do a bit of house cleaning. It's almost spring, so it's a good time to do cleaning. <laughs> all right, thank you all for joining. We'll leave it at this for today. Talk again next week.